Το αρχαίο ελληνικό δράμα ουσιαστικά είναι ένα είδος το οποίο γεννήθηκε μέσα από τη μουσική, δηλαδή το πέο πλασμά του είναι μουσικό. Ε, η, το λίκνο του, ας πούμε, το λογοτεχνικό είναι τα λυρικά μέτρα. Και σιγά σιγά, όπως προανέφερα πριν, όπως προανέφερα, συγγνώμη, ε, εξελίχθηκε σε αυτό το είδος που παγιώθηκε με τα χαρακτηριστικά που το γνωρίζουμε μέχρι σήμερα. Θα τολμούσα να πάω και δεν είμαι ειδικό ότι στο musical και αυτό το φέρνει κάπως κοντά με το αρχαίο δράμα υπάρχει μια εξισορρόπηση των δύο ας το πούμε βασικών ε, θεμελιακών συστατικών δηλαδή της μουσικής και της σκηνικής δράσης υπάρχει μια ισορροπία δηλαδή το κείμενο είναι μουσικό το υποθέτει τη μουσική όπως και η θεατρική δράση Επίσης, ε, έχει έναν ε, μουσικό προσανατολισμό. Το ίδιο ίσχυε και για το αρχαίο δράμα. Και για την ε, αρχαία τραγωδία και για την κομμωδία. Τώρα, ακόμα και ετυμολογικά, ας πούμε, η όρη τραγωδία και κομμωδία, λόγω του δεύτερου συνθετικού τους, το δι, παραπέμπουν στο μουσικό θέατρο. Με αυτή τη λογική, ναι, θα συμφωνήσω ότι ο Σχύλος, οι, οι αρχαίοι οι τραγωδοί, οι... βέβαια το πρώτο τους ε, χαρακτηριστικό είναι ότι ήταν ποιητέ. Δηλαδή, τα κείμενά τους είναι ποιητικά κείμενα. Ε, πέρα από το, α, από το ποιητικό σαν, ε, ε, όσον αφορά την έννοια, είχαν και ρυθμό. Με αυτή τη έννοια του ποιήματος κιόλας δηλαδή. Είχαν ρυθμό, άρα μέσα τους ε, όταν, ε, όταν υπάρχει ρυθμός στο λόγο υπάρχει και μελωδία. Ε, με έναν τρόπο, έτσι λίγο, όχι αυθαίρετο, αλλά ε, 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 αν κανείς σκεφτεί έτσι όπως λέμε τώρα, ε, μπορεί να πει ότι ήταν με έναν τρόπο και κάπου, κάπως συνθέτες, ας πούμε. Δηλαδή, αφού ήταν ποιητέ και αφού το, το κείμενό τους ε, εμπεριείχε το ρυθμό, άρα και τη μελωδία, εφόσον το ξηγούμε έτσι, θα μπορούσε κανείς να πει ότι επέβαλα με έναν τρόπο και μια, ένα είδο σύνθεση, ας πούμε. Μην αγνοούμε ότι στην Ελλάδα υπήρξε ένα πολύ ειδικό ε, ε, πώς το λέμε, είδος θεάτρου που λέγεται επιθεώρηση και αυτό ήταν το κυρίαρχο στο μουσικό θέατρο. Ε, η επιθεώρηση που ακριβώς δεν, δεν απαντάται ακριβώς με τον ίδιο τρόπο ούτε η ρεβή η γαλλική, ούτε το καμπάρε το γερμανικό Μπορεί να είναι συγγενή, αλλά δεν είναι ακριβώ αυτό η ελληνική επιθεώρηση. Η ελληνική επιθεώρηση είναι ένα ε, πράγμα που ναι, μεν ήρθε, μια, μια φόρμα που ναι, μεν ήρθε από την Ευρώπη, αλλά που διαμορφώθηκε εδώ και είναι ειδικά καθαρά και αποκλειστικά τοπικό ελληνικό. Η επιθεώρηση μεσουράνη από τι αρχέ του 1900 μέχρι το 1922, ε, στο 1922 υπέστη μια φοβερή καθίζηση. Γιατί επειδή η επιθεώρηση, πώς να το πω, ασχολείται με την επικαιρότητα και εκείνη τη στιγμή η επικαιρότητα ήταν φοβερά τραυματική, μετά από αυτή την καθίζηση ανεδύθη η οπερέτα.
When you see the juxtaposition of all those different acts, you have comedy, you have stage musicals. You know, Matilda was on there a couple of weeks ago. They were showcasing that musical. It was performed pretty much as it is on stage in the West End, just a film performance. Um, there are dance acts. There are the presenters. You know, so I think it's, it all comes under the same umbrella, but like we were saying before, I think TV, you know, is a lot smaller and, you know, you're acting to a camera, um, you know, sometimes you're breaking that fourth wall. When you're in the theatre, you know, it's, it's got to be much bigger. And you can tell, I think, when you watch people, that are, people on telly, when they're used to performing in theatre, that usually comes across on TV. When you see the old, you know, Bruce Forsyth, Jimmy Tarbuck, um, when you see those old variety comedians on, you know, and hosts on telly, um, it, you can tell that, that that spark is there straight away, you know, and you can tell that they are used to performing on stage because the relationship and the rapport they have with a live audience. Find influence that stage musicals I think have had on television right from its inception. That would be stage musicals plus the tradition of variety uh, in, the, in the UK in particular. So when you look at the way television is presented, it's sort of presented almost in the same way that a stage musical was traditionally presented. You have a stage, you have a bank of audience in, in front of you, and oh, even though the television, the bank of audience goes up the way, uh, in stage musicals it's the, the, the performers looking down, it's still a very much the same principle. And certainly in the beginning, uh, of TV with that and sort of variety. When you look at old Markham and Wise shows, for example, that's presented with the proscenium arch in much the same way that a, a stage musical might uh, might be presented. So uh, the first major influence I think is uh, the stage musicals have had over television is the look of television. Uh, and then secondly, I think there's just that uh, one of the biggest areas of TV is. Uh, singing and dancing and being funny and all these things happen in, in stage musicals so I think uh, it's part of the sort of uh, that part of our sort of entertainment heritage is uh, uh, very much part of both mediums. Well you know in the you know back in I don't know 20s, 30s, 40s it was the norm to go to the theatre um, it was the norm to go out and see shows as families that's what people used to do when the TV came along I think people came a little bit lazy um, and now it becomes more of a luxury, whereas then it was, it was the norm. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think nowadays people in musical theatre have to be able to sing, they have to be able to dance, they have to be able to act. Um, but we also have a great output of plays as well. Um, we have opera, we have classical music, there's so much choice there in London. We have ballet. Um, but musical theatre, that new commercial breed that's been brought into it through the reality TV shows, I think has really raised the profile and um, it's a very, very healthy culture, and you know, the West End's very healthy at the moment. I think that it's not just a film in the theater, it's perhaps in the theater, it's not just the last propirio, that was in the theater, but it's so strong in the middle, it's so strong, and the way to which they become the owners, the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurs, because ε, νομίζω ότι είναι και παγκόσμιο, παγκόσμιο φαινόμενο, δεν είναι μόνο ελληνικό. Το ότι οι εκδότε έχουν τηλεόραση, η, η τηλεόραση έχει του εκδότε, ότι είναι, είναι ένα συγκεκριμένο χώρο δηλαδή. Ε, νομίζω ότι είναι τόσο ισχυρό το μέσο που δεν μπορεί να αντισταθεί εύκολα. Ε, αν με ρωτάτε αν είναι πώ μου φαίνεται εμένα, ειλικρινά δεν έχω άποψη. Γιατί ε, στην τέχνη υπάρχει ένα νόμο ότι δεν υπάρχει κανένα νόμο. Ε, όλα επιτρέπονται κανονικά. Δηλαδή, δεν μπορείς, θα, ε, μ' αρέσει να μιλάω με παραδείγματα και θα φέρω ένα παράδειγμα. Ε, μπορεί μέσα από ένα reality τηλεοπτικό να βρεθεί ένα πάρα πολύ σπουδαίο και σημαντικό αντικειμενικά ταλέντο. Δεν μπορεί να το ακυρώσει επειδή το, ανα, το ανακαλύψαμε μέσα από την τηλεόραση. Δεν είναι άδικο. I think one interesting thing, one interesting trend from the theatre and the shows you mentioned all pretty much fall into the category is that it's harder and harder and harder to get people to go out to the theatre. It's more expensive to put these shows on. So invariably what they're all trying to do, and, and Superstar the TV show was part of this broad process, they're all trying to find a show that people are familiar with. 
so there's less of a hard sell at the beginning. You know, if you if you are putting on Mary Poppins for argument's sake, people know that story. You know, The Lion King, this whole trend of doing Disney or kids films and turning them into Ghost is another one, turning them into West End shows. The reason they do that is because those shows are much safer than doing writing a, a completely unknown story because they need to be able to attract people in. Um, and one of the ways of doing it is by using a title that everybody knows. Another way of doing it is, is casting on TV because that has two advantages. It gives you effectively a long advert. Let's you know be honest about it. Superstar had a 17 hour advert on ITV which didn't hurt bo box office at all. And also it allows people to buy into the lead. You know, you're putting a new lead in those shows, but people feel they know them already because they've seen them on the, on, on the show. And even better, they feel like they've had some sort of involvement in finding them. So as a result, if you've gone through and effectively cast a person, you, the argument is, and the logic is, that you're going to be more interested in paying the money to go and see them perform. And that definitely is the case. You know, um, there was a stat, I think, from one of Andrew's first shows, I think it was The Sound of Music, I think, yep. and they found out 70% of the audience, it was sold out, 70% of the audience that went had not only never seen The Sound of Music before that show, but actually had never been to the theatre. So those those shows, the Andrew shows, that were heavily criticised, let's not forget at the beginning, you know, Equity and various other people saying they thought it was wrong, actually have been a huge shot in the arm for, for the West End, and I, you know, I think they're, they're good good thing uh, to do and there will be more. I remember when the first TV uh, casting show um, appeared it was for um, The Sound of Music and I, I didn't really know how I felt about it when I first saw it. I, I didn't think it was an, an appropriate arena um, in which to cast a show but it became very clear and very apparent very quickly that it was opening up corridors uh, for directors that we hadn't perhaps explored before. Um, I mean, we, you know, we've often held open auditions for you know, the general public to, to come in, but these sort of TV talent shows sort of open the doors to f a far greater audience. Um, and therefore, the, the people that sort of were coming through the doors were not only trained performers, but people who hadn't done anything at all, but had talent um, and didn't know how to, um, to get into our business, didn't know where to go to, to train. And actually, you know, that, that's true of my past history. When I, when I was at school, I really didn't know how to become an actor or how to become a director. Those are things that I had to learn. And I think for our youth, uh, it, it sort of opened opportunities that perhaps weren't there before. Um, and, you know, it was interesting when we were casting for Superstar, for example, one of the interesting things that I, uh, I said to Andrew was, you know, I don't know that I would have seen somebody like, if I was casting the show and Ben had been put forward for it, I don't know if I would have considered him for the role of Jesus. But by watching him night after night and seeing him grow, I was able to see talents and and things about him that I would never have been able to see in, in an audition because obviously as he comes into audition he would he would simply be presenting himself as that role but actually what he was presenting in the TV show was Ben and what Ben could do. Έχω την εντύπωση ότι να, εκεί το κοινό είναι επηρεασμένο από τη τηλεόραση. Δηλαδή, το κοινό το θεατρικό έχει επηρεαστεί από το θέαμα στο σπίτι του, που είναι του χεριού του, δηλαδή ε, ανάλογα με το τι θέλει. Και έχει επηρεαστεί από τον τρόπο που παίζουν οι άνθρωποι στην τηλεόραση. Οπότε ε, ε, το θέατρο έχει χάσει λίγο από το στόμφο του και καλά έκανε, και αυτό είναι κέρδο, και αυτό το χρωστάμε στην τηλεόραση, γιατί μάθανε ο κόσμο ότι μπορεί να υποδίεσε και σε πιο χαμηλού τόνου και όχι σε αένα ξεφωνητά και πι, πιδωλαλήματα. Απ' την άλλη μεριά ε, έχει μια αίσθηση όταν βλέπει κάτι ότι δεν βλέπει κάτι σπάνιο αλλά κάτι που είναι στον καναπέ του και μπορεί να μας αλλάξει. Δηλαδή εκεί επηρεάστηκε και καλά και κακά.
Παρόλο που η τηλεόραση ε, χρησιμοποιεί εντελώ νατουραλίστικα σκηνικά, το θέατρο ε, αναγκάστηκε να τα πετάξει για να έχει μια διαφορετικότητα ίσως και έτσι προχώρησε πολύ περισσότερο. Και αυτό το χρωστάμε στην επιθεώρηση. Και αυτό το χρωστάμε στην τηλεόραση. Ναι. Welcome back to Superstar The Final. In just a moment, Ben and Rory are about to find out whether their life is going to change forever as one of them is about to be given the iconic lead role in Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice's arena tour of their timeless rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar. Here's the basic elements of a Saturday night show. First and foremost is that it's got to entertain the audience and it's got to appeal to a family audience. I think the BBC has done quite a lot of research on this, that it's the one day of the week, certainly in the UK, where the family sits down together and can watch a show together. So therefore the show has to appeal to a broad audience. Um, and I think it's, you know, you know, it's got to be entertaining, it's got to have an element of jeopardy. I think now um, just watching somebody sing a song isn't enough. There's got to be a bit of excitement, a um, bit of conversation between the viewer, between the family member of who they think was best, who, who was worst, did they do as good as, as they can. And I think the judging panels now that we see on the competition shows aid that kind of discussion and family context. So you see Bruce on Strictly or Anton Deck on um, uh, Saturday Night Takeaway or Dermot on X Factor so, uh, and Holly Willoughby on Surprise Surprise. So it's people, uh, presenters and people that they identify with and, and they like. Um, I think that's one key. I think extravagance is, is another one, or glitz, or whatever your word is for, for, the, for the huge sets with the amazing light shows um, and, and amazing presentation. Um, and scale, I think, is another, you know, you want it to feel special, that, you, that almost you are, to, to use your analogy, you are getting the theatre into your living room. Uh, every week, or the pop concert, you, you know, you're really experiencing it. So I think those three, um, so talent, artists, uh, scale, and, and extravagance in, in, in the sense of the set, are the, are the key crossovers. And if you look at all the shows that sit in that Saturday or Sunday night entertainment slot, they all have those. Um, from a producer's point of view, I would say that the things that are similar between a theatrical show and a, and a classic Saturday night shiny for show Invariably, the Shiny Four shows are live. Same with the theatre, which is good. You don't, we don't pre-record many of them. You do them live. Superstar was all live, so that is the same as the theatre. You get one shot at it. You get it right. If you get it wrong, you've got to find your way out of it because you can't stop and redo it. days of putting up a flat painted backdrop are numbered. You know, you look at X Factor, X Factor kind of will burn your retinas out with the amount of lights because it's all screens and um, it absolutely assaults uh, your eyeballs. And I think that's been going best part of a decade. People are used to seeing that sort of spectacle and now demand it in other mediums like theatre. So I think actually now, whereas television originally took everything from theatre and took all the skills. Now it's going back the other way and I think, it's, I think it's good, I think it's exciting. I think if you look at Superstar, the theatrical show, the reversion of the original um, West End show, it used all the modern uh, media available to make the story more engaging for the audience. What's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. Okay. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. Come that night. 
for example, a perfect example being I Dreamed a Dream, which Susan Boyle sang on Britain's Got Talent a few years ago. You know, that obviously catapulted her to fame, but at the same time it had a huge knock-on effect on Les Miserables in a massively positive way. Uh, because, you know, people that didn't know the musical at all thought, oh, what a lovely song. Where's it from? Les Miserables. Oh, let's go and see Les Miserables. And now, you know, the film is coming out as well. Um, obviously that happened with Mamma Mia. I mean, Mamma Mia, when that film came out, that was in the cinema for pretty much all year. Um, so it just shows the appeal um, that, these, that these shows that have turned into, into films, um, you know, have. Obviously I'm a musical director, so I come from a more musical background. Um, but, you know, when you hear a song from Mamma Mia, you know, classic ABBA, you've got the, the pop track, the people that remember the songs coming out in the 70s when they first came out. You've then got the new generation of musical theatre audience. You've then got people that wouldn't go and see it in the theatre, but would go and see the film. So, you know, from a commercial point of view, you ticked every box, pretty much. There's no question that, that television advertising does a huge benefit to, to productions. You know, so if one can afford to do it, um, you know, advertising the show by showing clips and you know showing um, critiques and stuff, you know, uh, stuff from the paper, what the papers have said, and, um, it you know works wonders. So that's one way of doing it. Having our actors on on programs promoting the show, you know, chat shows, all that stuff, that definitely has a, a, a big effect as well. Um, so there are ways that television can, can help. We've also recently, uh, uh, the performers have been on Strictly doing a, a number from the show. So again, that 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 helps enormously. Don't. So you might watch the whole ITV show, or the BBC show, based on that. But you don't, what you don't ever see is the full performance. So, but what you do, what it does do is make that leading actor or actress really, really famous, and it makes the show even more famous, and it drives ticket sales. It's just a massive marketing opportunity. So you're more likely to go to when it's on your radar to book tickets to go and see it. Who comes to London is thinking, what am I doing tonight? So they're probably saying, right, let me go and uh, have a look at a musical. Uh, I am a Londoner. I'm a little bit the old with the top hat, um, the Lion King. Oh, they're lovely. When you go into a theatre, it's just a great atmosphere, and just look, walking around London. If you look here at the buildings and all that, it's just a great, great atmosphere, and it gives you a great feeling when you walk through the door. The theme is, and body can is να μεταφέρει, ας πούμε, στην οθόνη τη ζεστασιά που έχει η θεατρική αίθουσα. Το οποίο είναι πάρα πολύ δύσκολο. Βέβαια, μπορεί να το πετύχει σε ένα βαθμό όταν σκηνοθετηθεί καλά από σκηνοθέτη ενώ της τηλεόρασης, εάν το γυρίσει δηλαδή με έναν τρόπο. Ε, βεβαίως, θέλει πάρα, πάρα πολύ δουλειά, πολύ καλό μοντάζ, πολύ καλό όλα αυτά τα που ακολουθούν μια τηλεοπτική. Ε, είναι βέβαιο πάντως ότι δεν πρόκειται να φτάσει τη, την πρώτη φορά που γίνεται κάτι πολύ πετυχημένο στη σκηνή ενός θεάτρου γιατί είναι άλλο πράγμα το θέατρο που μαζευόμαστε όπως σας είπα χίλια άνθρωποι, 500 άνθρωποι και όχι 5 εκατομμύρια έτσι είναι άλλο πράγμα πάντως μπορεί να γίνει και πρέπει να γίνονται πράγματα γιατί το θέατρο ξέρετε απευθύνεται σε λίγους θεατές των πραγμάτων ε, μπορούν να γίνουν πράγματα να μεταφερθούν α χάσουν και κάτι προκειμένου να, να το δει και ο, ο πολύ ο κόσμος ότι, ότι υπάρχει σχέση, υπάρχει σχέση δηλαδή είναι εμπνευσμένα. Ε, ακόμα και η δομή του είναι εμπνευσμένη ε, από το musical ή από το μουσικό θέαμα, ας πούμε. Δηλαδή, τι εννοώ, δεν υπάρχει μια ε, μυθοπλασία, αλλά ακόμα και οι παρουσιαστές προσπαθούν να υποδηθούν ένα ρόλο μέσα σε αυτά. Με την έννοια αυτή, ναι, υπάρχει κάποια σχέση. Όσον αφορά τη δομή, δηλαδή, όσον αφορά όμως το τι προσφέρουν, ε, δεν νομίζω ότι υπάρχει σχέση. Διότι είναι δύο τελείως διαφορετικά πράγματα. Το θέατρο, ας πούμε, είναι τέχνη. Ακόμα και το χειρότερο θέατρο έχει μέσα του ε, 
την τέχνη. Εμπεριέχει μία μορφή τέχνη. Ακόμα και η χειρότερη παράσταση. Η τηλεόραση, ο στόχο τη δεν είναι η τέχνη. Δεν είναι η ψυχαγωγία με την αρχαιοελληνική έννοια. Δεν είναι ε, 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 η, η ανάγκη τη και η ύπαρξή τη δεν είναι τέτοια ώστε να κάνει τον άνθρωπο καλύτερο. Ενώ η τέχνη εμπεριέχει αυτό μέσα τη. Το να κάνει τον άνθρωπο καλύτερο, το να επικοινωνήσει. I think increasingly now theatre has started to copy elements of television. In that, they will use video projections. You know, the last two shows I've seen, obviously Superstar, obviously Jesus Christ Superstar, huge uh, projections, lots of video footage. Um, and then I saw, recently I saw War of the Worlds, which was um, a show that had been out, been out originally in the 80s. And again, they were using a lot of video screens, a lot of imagery, which typically is quite a new innovation in the last 20 years in theatre because they use scenery. But now they will use video screens to create an atmosphere. Um, and I think they've done that. And I don't think it's kind of, it's not copying. It's a sensible thing to do. And I think they've had to do that because the audience The modern audience is more sophisticated. The modern audience has been raised on television, they've been raised on film, and they expect a bit of video stimulation in the nicest possible way. At last, all too well, I can see where we are. Soon will be. If you strip away the myth from the man. If you're on the truth, we had a very funny meeting at the Really Useful Group. We sat down with the guys who were directing the, the musical. Um, well, they call it a rock opera. They don't like calling Jesus Christ Superstar musical. It's a rock opera. So we sat down and they said to us, right, we're going for a very modern contemporary take. It's going to have the feel of the riots. It's going to be very, very stark. It's going to be very, very urban. Our backdrop will probably be a brick wall, you know, with burnt out cars and um, and everything on it. And we sat there with Andrew and they were saying to us, right, okay, which of those elements can you take through? Because we want the TV show to reflect what's going to be on the stage show. Um, and I just sat, sat there and went, absolutely none of them. We're not having any of that. We're a prime time Saturday, you know, prime time ITV show. We can't have brick walls and burnt out cars and, you know, it's the wrong look completely. So... At that point, we just had to say, you know, my responsibility is a TV show. We just, I just say, we're not doing anything to do with the musical. We will find you your lead character. But we need to make it a TV show first and foremost that works. Um, so we're going to give it the staging. We're going to give it the glamour. You know, we're going to give it the, the, spend the money on the costumes, get the guys looking good. You know, it's going to be very glossy. It's not going to be gritty and urban. So our show will look nothing like yours, um, and that's what we decided. And and you have to. I mean, initially Andrew wasn't best pleased that I said that, but that at that point, I as the producer of the TV show have to make a show that I know will work. And if I put burnt out cars and you know desolate urban scenes every night on ITV on a prime time entertainment show, um, I'd have been up in Peter Fincham's office after night one probably and out the door after night two so we couldn't do it so i just said we're not doing it so you have to you know there's there are times when you can't overlap and that was one of them yeah i think we when we had our early discussions as to what the the stage production was going to be um andrew actually was one that felt uh, strongly that we should sort of we should be able to recognize the the culture of what it was that we were going to be creating for the sh for the show but um i think that in many ways the the tv show was sort of far more advanced in where it was how it was going to be developing its style in in a way bef before we were um because we were we were still having our discussions our dis design discussions over a period of time um and you know meeting with various different designers who were going to do our costumes and, and things so i think it um we we did have some very early on discussions about trying to sort of to, to understand what the production was going to be and we certainly explained what the, the vision for the show was and, and then ITV sort of took on their own way of doing it.
earth are you all looking at? Hello, Mr. Weber. We've got a very busy okay, day. Okay, everyone, so check over. Θεωρώ θεμητό για οποιονδήποτε καλλιτέχνη να χρησιμοποιήσει ό,τι συμβαίνει στο καιρό του. Ε, τα reality είναι μια τηλεοπτική δυνατότης, έτσι, όπως κάποτε ήταν ε, κάποια παιχνίδια ραδιοφωνικά ή οτιδήποτε. Η κοινωνία διαφοροποιείται, τα μέσα ενημέρωσης διαφοροποιούνται. Το να χρησιμοποιήσει ένας τόσο μεγάλος, αλλά και οποιοδήποτε, πολύ περισσότερο όταν μιλάμε για αυτόν φυσικά, ε, μπορεί να χρησιμοποιήσει οποιοδήποτε μέσο προώθησης του έργου του. Γιατί όχι, το να ε, είσαι κοντά στον κόσμο ε, δεν είναι... Όχι απλώς δεν το, δεν το βρίσκω κακό, ίσα ίσα το βρίσκω πάρα πολύ γόνιμο για ένα καλλιτέχνη. Ε, δεν καταλαβαίνω πως ένας καλλιτέχνης ή αν θέλετε και ένας φιλόσοφος, ένας άνθρωπος της σκέψης, ένας άνθρωπος που θέλει ε, να προβληματίζεται ή πώς μπορεί να ζει έξω από την κοινωνία. Ή, ίσα ίσα από αυτό θα το έκρινα μάλλον πάρα πολύ θετικό εκ μέρου του, χρησιμοποιεί κάτι το οποίο έχει πάρα πολύ ευρία, πώς να το πω, Απήχηση και γιατί να μην το χρησιμοποιήσει. Το ζήτημα είναι πώς και γιατί το χρησιμοποιείς. Δεν υπάρχει μόνο αρνητική χρήση ή μόνο θετική χρήση. Ε, στις μέρες μας δυστυχώς ε, πιστεύω από μια συνομπίστικη διάθεση και από όχι ουσιαστική σκέψη ε, ότι το τηλεοπτικό αυτόματα παίρνει μια χρειά φτύνιας προχειρότητας, ευκολίας, ασημαντότητας την ίδια στιγμή που η τηλεόραση είναι το βασικότερο πράγμα δηλαδή δεν υπάρχει κανένας άνθρωπος που δεν βλέπει τηλεόραση κανένας δεν υπάρχει Είναι αυτό που λέμε, δηλαδή πολλές φορές τα μέσα σχέδια και τα σχέδια γιατί ήθελα να δημιουργήσω να δημιουργήσω το κλίμα της σχέδιας σήμερα και σίγουρα το σχέδιο πολιτικό που ζούμε σήμερα δηλαδή ναι, δημιουργήσαμε πολλά σχέδια Uh, as part of the uh, a part of the production simply because that's the world we live in um, and uh, and I wanted to make a point of it that you know that ironically that even though we're kind of housing ourselves in tents on a staircase somewhere sort of occupying a place to sort of get our point across we're still using the world's technologies in order to find out what's going on so we're still pulling out our iPads and using our mobile phones because this is the century that we live in this is the world we live in it's the only way to gain or find out what's going on Thank you.